The state of the program at Texas, as I said, is maybe not something if you're a Virginia Tech fan you care a whole lot about, but as I also told you, Texas is a keystone program. What happens there affects everyone. It affects the entire sport, the entire ecosystem is affected if there's a job opening, for example, at Texas. And there could be one in the not too distant future. I told you last Saturday, I thought the Red River shootout between Texas and OU, I thought it was a game Oklahoma would love to have. I thought it was a game Texas and Tom Herman had to have. Texas lost that game. I don't think Tom Herman's going to be the head coach at Texas next year as a result of that. I don't think anything's happening this week, but I think that uh, things were set in motion after that loss that will result in you having a new head coach at Texas in 2021. This is my opinion on this. There's a lot obvious on the surface. They are discombobulated. They are one of the high penalty teams in college football. They never play consistently. They are mistake prone. All that's on the surface, and that's clear. Also, they're just not winning enough games. That's obvious. There's a lot of other stuff going on at Texas, and this is where the drama really kicks in behind the surface that's less obvious. Sam Ellinger, you were looking at, you're still looking at a picture of him right now if you're watching on YouTube. There was a moment, it's been a big talk in Texas circles this week that maybe you're not familiar with. Uh, they've had a big controversy about the eyes of Texas out there, the song uh, that they play after the game, and it is ingrained. It is one of the layers of the fabric of Texas football culture. They play it at weddings, they play it at birthdays, they play it at graduation. It's a big deal. It may sound silly to you, it's a huge deal to those folks. Sam Ellinger was one of. I can't tell you he was the only one. I know from the pictures I saw, he was one of the only kids in that entire roster standing on the field after the game Saturday with the horns up. They just lost in devastating fashion when they played Eyes of Texas. Uh, folks are irate about it, and they're irate because they, they feel like Tom Herman's lost his locker room, or maybe he never had a firm grasp on it. And I was reading Bobby Burton talk about this over on Horns 24-7 today, and he made a good point. Uh, and he's obviously far more dialed in at Texas than I am, but he made a really good point. He said... You know, in his estimation, he thinks Herman kind of tried to play things both ways here. He thought winning would cure everything. He thought they'd get into the season, and he thought they'd be winning games, and so all that stuff would subside. And, you know, players that claim they didn't feel comfortable standing on the field when that song was played, all that would kind of be swept away because everyone would be winning and things would be hunky-dory. Well, there aren't winning, and things aren't hunky-dory. And so now... There's nothing to fall back on, really. A lot of people view this as the last straw, not just the loss to Oklahoma, but then that scene on the field was an entire microcosm in many people's minds in Austin and beyond of what Texas football is under Tom Herman and, much more importantly, what it hasn't been under Tom Herman. And I agree with what Bobby was saying, for example, and what some other Texas folks I've talked to this week have said. There's no but. Sometimes when you got a guy... You know, Greg Marshall's been under fire, Wichita State, for example, this week. A report came out about how he had treated players. There's a but with Greg Marshall. And the but is, well, but he wins a whole lot. You know, if you're going to defend Greg Marshall, it, well, but, but he does win. Uh, this hasn't been, there's been no allegation of Tom Herman abusing players or anything like that. But what I'm saying is people are mad at him. And people are very upset with the way the program's being run. There's no but. What do you fall back on? What's better now? What's trending in the right direction? with Texas. There's no positive. There's nothing. You, you got the multi-year experience quarterback there. This is the year. We talked about this in the preseason. This was the year it all should be happening for Texas. It's not. So there's nothing, even if someone wants to defend you, what do you, what do you say? If I were to be in a debate setting, if this were a debate class and I were handed Tom Herman as the cause that I had to defend, it'd be a short debate. I'll tell you that. And I pride myself on my debate skills. It'd be a short debate. I had another person I was talking to this week. I kind of asked them to be the devil's advocate because they, they agree that they probably don't want Herman around much longer. But I said, what are people saying at Texas who aren't necessarily sold that a move needs to be made? Because a lot of the power brokers are sold that a move needs to be made and are willing to withhold certain things and resources and assets if a move isn't made. But I said, what, what are people saying? What's the other side of this coin? There's got to be another side. Well, it'll wreck the recruiting class. And I laughed, and they said, no, no, seriously, that's, that's what they're saying. I couldn't believe it. Like, that's the best that you came back with? Because no one at Texas ever comes back with the same thing you would say at South Carolina right now, which is, well, it's going to cost a lot of money to buy him out. That, that, that stuff's a rounding error for them. That's an office supply budget for some of the Texas big money folks. So no one cares about the money. 
Many, I mean, you're, we're sitting here calling our betting segment the Ramen Noodle Express. They live in a different world out there in the uh, ONG world, the uh, oil and gas industry, they different world. So they don't worry about the money. But the recruiting class, that's what I've been told could suffer. Uh, obviously, the retort from anyone with common sense is, what's happening right now? Did you not hear what I just said? We just did the team talent composite. For those of you watching the individual video, not the whole show, Texas has the number five roster in America right now. They suck. They're a bad football team. What are they going to become the number three team in America? Are they all of a sudden going to win after that? What's going to happen? What, what sign have you seen that Tom Herman's going to win with any amount of talent? I haven't seen that at all. I haven't seen that whatsoever. So I would come back at you with this. It is inexplicable that guys like the Brockermeyer twins, who are Texas legacies, who probably grew up looking for a reason to commit to Texas, are not committed to Texas. Both of them are going to Alabama. There's no excuse why those kids shouldn't be going to Texas. That's one of a number of recruitments we could talk about. If all you're worried about is your recruiting class, let me tell you what you can do with that argument. I hope you hear that on the podcast. That's what we do with that argument. Because I couldn't care less what talent you have. You can't do anything with it. And so let's go find a guy. Because what it does, we have recruited well here at Texas. What it does is, as I've made this metaphorical co comparison many times this week, what it does is, it goes back to what I've said about Texas. Texas is not broken. They're not broken. They've got the investment financially, emotionally. It's a massive fan base. It's a globally recognized brand. It's a prestigious university. They are enhancing the game day experience there. They are massively upgrading facilities. They're adding on to the stadium. Everything and then some you could ever want if you're a head coach in demand is at Texas. They are the fighter jet. It's already built. It's already been rolled off the assembly line. The only problem is you just got the wrong guy in the cockpit in my opinion. Well, guess what? You don't have to rebuild the plane. See, if you had to rebuild the plane, like if you had to tear everything down and start over, that's a multi-year rebuild. You don't. You take the pilot out of the cockpit and you put someone in there who has experience flying a jet like that, and then you, you close that little glass roof and he puts on, puts on his little face mask, he's ready to go. Introduce himself to the secretaries, but he's ready to go. Install his culture, he's ready to go. Just keep recruiting like they are. He's ready to go. I think that's what has to happen at Texas. I think that is, to me now, the majority sentiment about what has to happen at Texas.